Hello everyone and welcome now to game two in the series. This is going to be on Ohana, a Terran versus Zerg matchup. Wings of Liberty. We see Terran spawning as the or, or Terran on the top left hand side of the map. It's Roxas Jagon versus GS Donna spawning as the pink Zerg. Zerg versus Terran on Ohana. And we'll see what's going to be going down here. Game one, it really never felt like the Terran player had much of a chance. The sheer size of the map and the ability for him to freely power drone really gave the Zerg too much of an advantage. Terran was unable to place down any sort of real early pressure. And by not being able to put down any real early pressure, not even with Hellions, the Zerg engine was able to get and reach critical mass once the Mutalists were in the skies. Map control was all in favor of Zerg. And Zerg could simply tech and upgrade every which way he wanted. Now, Ohana is a much smaller map, as we see the Terran player already going into a barracks on the front door, and the question will be whether or not he's going to be going for his gas. Meanwhile, let's take a look at the Zerg. Zerg, so far, looks as he's doing not very much. He could perhaps be trying to go for a hatchery down here in just a moment, and it looks like that may be the case once more. So it is going to be a hatchery first, a 15 hatchery down. And I am surprised at this because Ohana is a map where Zerg players often get two raxed. Um, Zerg has not scouted any which way to figure out if there is perhaps a two rax on the map. It looks like it will be instead a one rax expand coming in from the Terran this time. And one rax expand, a very, very solid build once more. Will the Terran player do enough to be able to push back his opponent? There's the SCV pushing out, and I like this play by the Terran player. He's decided to close off his front door completely before building up a command center. And what this does is it makes his opponent try and figure out what's going on. And as I say, it's going to be a one racks expand. The Terran player proves me wrong and goes for a refinery. So this refinery is a bit late. Um, don't know quite what to make of this now. Only one SCV on gas at this stage. Perhaps this is a very, very specific timing on this build as we are getting more Marines now trained up. So far, Zerg getting up that spawning pool still doesn't have to wor worry about very much at all. Terran has a good look at what's going on inside the base. And are we going to perhaps see a supply depot or a bunker be placed down right off over here? That would be a perfect location, except for Queens can, in fact, shoot down there. As Marines are going to try and get underneath this Overlord, this potentially could be huge. Is this Overlord going to go down? And every Overlord at this stage matters. Every Larva matters. And this is going to be 100 resources lost early in the game. There it goes. Zerg currently supply blocked, will not be able to train up units for a little bit of time there. What is his answer going to be? All right, double overlords. Perhaps he knew that he was going to be losing an overlord anyway, decided to start training up another one as we are going into the double training of Marines. So far, a lot of gas still for Terran. He is not spending his 100 gas. Finally going for a factory. This is a bit late. And it looks like he's trying to place down some Hellion pressure a little bit a little bit later than normal. Now, normally you would say, you know what, I want to try and get out Hellions as fast as I can and put pressure down and, and try to force my opponent back. But sometimes going to Hellions in a different route or going to in a harassment unit at, at a different time, different route can throw off your opponent as well. Your opponent may not be expecting those units um, or the, those combination of units particularly and with that he may be ha he may have his units just simply out of position or perhaps over drone at times as we now see a really large drone advantage 34 compared to 22 as drones are now making their way down to the natural expansion you can see the zerg only running on two gas currently 18 drones inside the main base no no extractors at all and the Marines are still hunting for those overlords, perhaps trying to get lucky twice. Here we have Hellions now being doubly trained. We are going into a starport and we may see a Hellion, Hellion um, cover fire drop, which would be a pretty interesting strategy And at this stage in the game. The Marines now trying to take down Supply Depot, perhaps doesn't like that one particular Supply Depot. 
being there wants to be able to build another building here of some sort as the hellions now move to take and earn some of that map control all important map control as the hellions now making their way in metabolic boost surprisingly not yet completed is a zergling going to even get taken down no it is not as two queens are there to meet and greet those hellions the hellions decide better than to try and run up against that many queens those queens can cause a bit of a problem here we go medevac now being trained we can see barracks building and adding on a tech lab and we're still seeing a little bit of this crazy crazy um hop lift up landing add on swapping as we are now going into banshees so this is going to be a hellion marine push with banshees behind it or perhaps banshees as air support you can see cloak is not being researched at this time and it really feels like terran is just not spending enough of his resources at this stage here we go hellions gonna take down one of those creep tumors there it goes and another one goes down as well as the hellions try to push up here triple um, building a wall off as the roaches are going to be able to push back in those hellions not very effective as the marines are now once again lifting off back inside that medevac hellions are going to be driving away where are they going to be going to next as the hellions are looking to back off once more all right there is a lot of roaches there is going to be one banshee in the air is the banshee going to perhaps scout out a couple of those roaches that could be an, a potentially huge play here as the yes the roaches are not going to be able to do very much one banshee can absolutely destroy a roach army especially without the glio reconstitution and it is going to be trying to do exactly that hellions now trying to push in scvs are in position as well too much splash damage scvs are going to get taken down but this is not a good trade at all for the zerg he's trying to get in some units it looks as though the supply depots have gone down and the zerg is behind perhaps giving getting a little bit too many free kills or giving a little bit too many free kills in this game so far second banshee is now in the air we can see pathogen glands transitioning into infestors there's still a fair amount of roaches banshees will have to be focused firing down those queens the queens do in fact have armor upgrades so 24 damage now down to 20 as the hellions going up against a couple of roaches roach is able to push back through here we go we have a little bit of an engagement scvs are on auto repair the hellbats or hell, hellbats are non-existent at this point and we're going to be seeing the marines now make their move out the marines do not have stim they do not have combat shield might as well be absolutely 100 percent the naked variety as we see a whole bunch of units coming off over here and oh this could be bad scvs marines hellions now trying to come into a very very good position there a very decent um concave coming in from the terran player but it's the sheer numbers of, of zerg units on the field gonna be too much and once more, Terran forced to retreat as the roaches may be able to just simply knock on this front door, huff and puff, and blow acid to um, spill or to knock this house down. And what's going on here? One banshee sees a swarm of roaches in the front door. This is going to be a bit of a problem. The supply depot already down. Hellions trying to hold off the swarm not going to be able to do so are the supply depots going to go up in time yes they do as the marines are now getting unloaded as well both sides still fighting just a massive roach army push here and zerg just simply dominating in this terran versus zerg matchup terran most likely will be giving the gg once more and it never really felt like the terran player had much of a chance you can see the roaches now just trying to take down this bunker a lot of scvs not even on auto repair they perhaps should be repairing um each other or the bunker as two sea tanks finally make their way over and that should be enough as mules now perhaps pushing back inside the main all right what is this 97 supply versus 75 harvester count is 58 to 33 terran does have the larger army at this point so if the Terran player actually tried to engage, he might have been able to deal a bit of damage, but he's just simply too far away from his opponent. And once he gets there, the Zerg is just going to have simply way too many units. No, what is this? Instead, he has decided to go up and train 15 more drones. Oh, if the Terran player decided to roll out right now, he would be able to um, take down many of these units. There's simply not that many larvae on the field, only six larvae. And with only six larvae, 
you cannot train that many units all right here we go siege tanks no siege tech as of yet we do see a raven all right overlord is gonna get shot down here is the command center yes orbital command already making its way over it will take a little bit of time before all of that creep does recede 135 supply versus 101 the roaches once again swarming their way through gonna get once again reach up a very very high supply as the roaches are pushing their way in again takes a takes a look take a look at this all of these roaches will get taken down here in just a moment roaches continuing to push their way in as the hellions are now backing off 101 supply versus 133 73 drones versus 45 sc 46 scvs army composition zerg is even higher in army and in workers with a 30 supply difference this is absolutely huge what are we going to be seeing though we are going to be seeing some thors now make their way into the field and this siege tank army if it is properly set up will be difficult to take down double banshees though oh infestor is going to catch all of these units here it may be just simply just be chain fungal growth all the way queens now throwing those darts and two banshees knocked out of the sky simply without any issues we do see the greater spire and this is just going to be adding insult to injury here as zerg going to now use not only his army supply advantage but his army technological advantage as well to rain on the terrans parade i do not believe there is a starport with a reactor that means there are going to be no vikings and with no vikings to counteract those brood lords only thors that is not going to be dealing much damage at all there is one raven perhaps one raven with those seekers mi missiles will um, will deal some damage to those brood lords, but with only one, you really need three or four to get them to all clump together and then start hitting with all of that splash damage. We see about a 1100 to 1200 resource difference. SCV, Terran player has caught up a bit, but we already see a very large difference in the bank of these players. More units being trained as we now see six brood lords morphing into the field. Medevac now looking to perhaps do a bit of a drop. It looks like Infernal Pre-Igniter and level two weapons upgrade coming online in just a moment. It is not going to come down in time as the roaches are there to meet and greet. Fungal growth catching all of those units. And this will be the end of this drop. Uh, other side, Hellions now trying to perhaps catch some drones and will be able to get some kills here. And this, and this is going to deal a little bit of damage. 27 worker kills versus 5 versus 6 now. Still not all that much. Not much to write home about. 69 drones versus 67 SCVs. And if the Terran player is able to get his way back into this game, it's all going to be about how the Zerg player simply messed up more than the superior play of the Terran. Double Thors, Siege Tanks down here. You can see that front door is completely sealed off, but nothing, a couple of banings or roaches could not knock down with just a little bit of time and effort. Meanwhile, Marines now looking to shoot down this overlord here. We'll get it shot down. Are we going to build another command center? That is the question as the Zerglings try to make their way in, quickly get destroyed. And we now finally see some Vikings in the air. All right, unit compositions, 10 Broodlords, 3 Corruptors. Those Thors do not have that impact attack in order to even destroy those Broodlords. And these Broodlords are going to be causing a bit of problems. Here we go. Ten Broodlords ready to drop off the kids. Roach is getting taken down to free up, free up some more supply. As the Terran player now slowly inching forward again. We see two zero upgrades coming in on those siege tanks. Roaches, Hellions all falling apart there. What's going to be happening? The siege tanks may try to siege up. Do they spot the Broodlords? Yes, they do. And there we have it. This may be the end as the Broodlords are just going to drop off those Broodlings and take all of these siege tanks down. There they go. The Broodlings already trying to get in some shots here. So much damage being dealt, being forced to retreat. Another siege tank taking a bit of um, splash damage there as we now see the destructible rocks getting shot on the far side. A lot of siege tanks. Are we going to actually have a large engagement? I do believe so. Broodlords, Infester, Corruptor versus 
what is this? Siege tank, Thors, Vikings, Ravens, Hellions. And here we have it. Fungal, Growth, Brewlord dropping off all the kids. There's a point defense drone. Corruptors trying to take down all the units. Unable to do so. Thor is unable to do very much of anything. And what's going to be happening? More Thors, more Vikings being trained. Siege tanks unable to hold back the army here as the Thors now need to take down all of those air units with no impact cannons. Those, those Brood Lords are simply way too much, way too beefy. The Brood Lords are not even, well, they are stacking up on top of each other a bit. And what's going on here? All of the Thors will get taken down and perhaps the Siege Tanks are now on the run. There you have it. SCVs once again getting taken down. All those Siege Tanks will be retreating again. But that was a, actually a decent trade for the Terran player. The entire ground army is gone. But we, what is this? We now see a new round of Broodlords and Corruptors. And I take it all back. The Zerg player just in too much of a favorable position. 13 Broodlords now in the air. And with out even with reactor vikings this is not going to be enough all right here comes the corruptors once again trying to come in with a strong counter push taking down the vikings brood lords are still pretty much going unanswered at this time and the brood lords uh, the brood lords trying to take down the thor scvs are desperately trying to auto repair it it does get taken down again and what is happening now the brood lords are deciding to retreat and return home 170, 175 supply versus 142. Let's take a look at the losses. Losses higher for Terran. As we are now at 55 SCVs versus 71 drones. Alright. Zerg has taken pretty much three quarters of the map already. It is a three base, a three base total Terran versus a total base of six. So yeah, that is not looking good whatsoever. And what will be happening next? More Broodlords being trained. Vikings still being doubly trained as well. No weapons upgrades on those Vikings that help take down more units as the Broodlords once again come in. What is the counterattack here? The Broodlord is going to be dropping all of those Broodlings down. That is going to be a bit of a problem. Corruptors going after all of the Vikings. Vikings now shot down as well. Corruptors could corrupt those stores. In addition, and I believe this is the end, the Zerg army just able to replenish up far too quickly and there is the gg thanks for watching thanks for listening